بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد All praises due to Allah May Allah's peace and blessing be upon his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Today we are with this uh, class for sisters on Wednesday and the class we start covering some of the affairs of the Muslim whether they are here or in the East like the things that Muslims share in general, and what are the things that uh, particularities for the Muslim in the West here or in the United States? Among those is how to prioritize your life. So who's going to give me a brief about last time, last uh, Wednesday, what are the things that you understood or they are the highlight of that day or they are give you some inspiration or you follow the advice and you find it successful? Who did, who can say these things to us? Um, Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, I think I'll start because I, I see a few of the uh, sisters are new here. Uh, uh -huh. and it'd be good for, uh, for us to start with a, a small um, uh, introduction once again. Um, so last week we, we uh, mentioned the February topic. Uh, strategic planning and prioritizing going in line with with the masjid um, uh, educational uh, plan for the month of February. Uh, we are talking about um, how executive functions in the light of Islam can save us from, you know, things like procrastination and distractions and things like that. Um, and last week, we, uh, we were talking about the importance of goal setting, uh, planning and time management. And we went over all the topics of what, what this would cover in February. Um, we uh, we were also told uh, about the uh, the circle of influence and control and of uh, concern, um, and on that basis, uh, an activity was sent out to the sisters um, to write a journal, to have um, have a list of things that cons uh, that that are particular to them and a list of things that are particular to their family and friends, and then a list of que um, questions that are their concerns for the community. Um, mm -hmm. And mashallah, a lot of sisters have responded to that, but I'm still waiting for a lot of other sisters to uh, put forward their, um, their concerns. Once that is collated, then we are going to uh, use that as our, uh, as our field guide, where we are going to assess uh, the, our concerns, and then uh, plan on a way uh, how to fix those issues at the end of the month. Right. So, Great. <laughs> Any question about this? Your new sisters, did you get an idea or there is something still not clear? Because we want everybody to be clear going forward about what we do. It's very important. And I want to hear you know, your uh, feedback. Assalamu yeah, alaikum. I understand. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Yes, uh, I understand. Like uh, she is discussing about the uh, the upcoming programs, right? Right. Okay. Like we are, we are uh, in in our masjid. As salam, simply speaking, I I will take few minutes to give you the structure. I want you to imagine it as a flow chart in your head. Okay? So when I'm talking, I want you to start drawing in your head what I'm saying. So it registers that way as a picture uh, in your head. At Masjid as Salam, which is part of the Islamic Society of Greater Houston. Islamic Society of Greater Houston has about 20 centers spread all over the greater Houston area, Baytown to Katy and League City to Conroe and Huntsville. So that's how big is the area that they spread, you know, their centers in. Their vision um, or their mission statement is Iqamat al-Din. Iqamat al-Din means establishment of the religion, establishment of Islam, and that has two sides. One is to help those who follow Islam to be clear about its teaching and practice. So me and you, 
the Islamic Society of Greater Houston provide us with whatever needed, service programs, uh, lectures, you name it, that will, that will help us, that will help us or should help us to be good Muslims. That is part one. The other half is to invite non-Muslims to Islam in a very nice way. So to keep, to preserve Islam for its followers and to show others what Islam is and invite them to it. So that is the main thing of the Islamic Society of Greater Houston. Now, as a center under the Islamic Society of Greater Houston, we asked ourselves, like me and the administration, a few years back, how can we do that as a center, as Masjid al-Salam? Now that is the practical aspect. How can we do that? So we have the outreach program, like for interfaith, for new Muslims, uh, non-Muslims, they come to the mosque, we have interfaith programs, they come to Iftar and Ramadan, they ask questions, we go to their churches and synagogues, they come to our mosque. And that is our way to invite people to know about Islam. We are not in the business of converting people, but we are in the business of showing Islam to others and leave this to Allah Azza wa so that's that part. So there are programs. There is a program every other Saturday to teach new Muslims and non-Muslims about Islam by Sheikh John Graf Yahya. He comes to our mosque and so on. Now we come to preserving Islam for its followers. We have youth. We have this program for sisters. This is a mentorship. So you become mentors for other younger ladies. So whatever we learn here, enabling you to teach that somewhere. I have youth mentorship, same thing. So they come out from my program, give speeches, lectures, serve in the mosque, they volunteer and so on and so forth. We have programs for the community, uh, for their religious education, like, you know, Sunday morning, Friday night, Thursday night. We have that uh, to teach people about their religion, peace here and peace there, but the whole program is structured. We have Sunday school for the children, Saturday and Sunday school, weekend school. We have a Montessori program and Houston Peace Academy, you know, that teaches children up to like fifth or sixth grade. And we have seniors program that they come and uh, chat and socialize and have food and all of that. And they come to the prayers and we make their, we help them with whatever they need to uh, live a happy life. We have other programs, educational programs. So that's a structure of how we preserve the religion for the people who are following it. So Jum'ah prayer, Friday prayer, speeches, funeral, marriages, lots of services to help Muslims do that. And our masjid, mashallah, takes the lead. It is the most active mosque in town, hands down. You know, I challenge anybody to bring me a mosque that is as active as Masjid Salam. All the time there is a program going on whether it is a sports program, religious program, educational program, uh, awareness program uh, of something. So our mosque is always taking the lead in that. So that is basically what we do. Now, to do that, to be able to do that, we said that we have to create a structure with the words so people understand exactly how we're doing it. So we said that Masjid al-Salam will have its vision that comes out from the Islamic society's vision that we try to build, we try to construct and build, help all the Muslims to have the good human being, the model human being, the model Muslim, the model citizen, American citizen, and then the model community, family and community. So each and every one of us, what are the basic human morals and manners? What are the basic principles of Islam that you have to be following at all times? What are the things that has, you know, conversation or controversy or debate and about it? How, what you do about it? The difference of opinions and all of that. So this is um, that that aspect, you know, building the human being and then the Muslim. Then the citizen of civic engagement uh, to vote is important and to do this important. And this class here now we're trying to teach you skills that you become a good human being, a good Muslim and a good citizen. Then we build a family, help the family with marriages and counseling and premarital counseling and 
solving disputes Islamically, even divorce, we try to do it Islamically and all of that. So services for the family to be strong and intact. Uh, then, you know, once we do that, we make sure that the community is in the same line. We have a strong community, strong individual, strong family, strong community. Then we say we're going to make theme of the year. Every year we focus on something and we tell people that this is the year of such and such. So our year this year, this is the year of um, this is the year of action. This year is the year of activity and action. So we take action now. We are not going to be passive listeners only or uh, someone like me talking only and without you know without you know measuring the benefits from my talks. Okay, so so this is uh, that to build the community and all of this. So this year, so we have one year is the year of training, and another year is the year of survey, and so on. So we surveyed everything like in 2017, start surveying you know the community, seeing what is what they need and all of that. Then you know in 2018, the year of planning, we planned what we're going to do. And that's what we're following now, the plan, education and all levels for all backgrounds and brothers and sisters, all ages, all levels, backgrounds and all of that. So this 2018 was the year of planning. Then the year of 2019 was more of the year of training, training people and putting who is who, you know, where. And uh, in 2020, the year of programs and uh, and. Uh, you know, uh, pilot and piloting programs. So in 2020, there were this program starting and this program starting and this program started. And we're trying to see which program will stick, which program will be with the community. And the year 2021 and 2022, uh, I mean, 20 and 21 were the years of COVID, as you know. So basically, there were no much to give. So this, this was an online thing. So the year of uh, 2022 was the year of mentorship last year, mentorship, mentoring uh, the leaders of each uh, activity and each program, uh, who's going to be handling the uh, speeches, Juma speeches, and what does he uh, or she needs, who's going to be handling the new um, uh, residents, the people who come to the community, moving from other states, and so on. So, that was last year, year of 2022, mentorship. This year is the year of action. We take actions. That's why you will find lots of execution of programs. And you will see that, that we are executing that. Khutbah, now we are trying to convince ISGH that we do our training for the khutib. We need certain quality, certain specific qualifications for those who give the Juma speech. We need to train, you know, sisters to be around um uh, the sister community if there's anything wrong someone will interfere and they have the islamic perspective of the problem and if they don't they come and ask and and and, and, and like that and ramadan they take care of the children and the babysitting and all of this so basically this is a year of action it means each and every one of us has to make a plan and take an action uh and then we make the theme of the month so the theme of the year is, is the year of action and we we'll focus more on the individual and the community. Individual and uh, individual and community, yes. So um, uh, this is the year vision. Then every month we have a topic or a theme that we try to make all programs, as many programs as, as we can, to incorporate it in their programs. So if somebody is making a sports program, tell him that the theme of the month, this month, is setting priorities and strategic planning. So we'd love you to apply that with your team. You have to teach them their priorities about the soccer or about the taekwondo or whatever they learning. You have to emphasize on the theme of the month. And I told the uh, masjid that they will put it in the screen and send it to people in their mail and all of that. So you can suggest, so you have the theme of the month. It's 12 months, we already have the theme for. Like next month, Sha'ban, ramping up for Ramadan. And then after that, you know, in Ramadan, the high high quality spirituality. And after Ramadan is how to keep up with what you promised Allah to do until the next year. Um, and you'll, you'll actually see the effect of that, subhanAllah. Uh, so th this is basically what um, the structure is for anybody who's new and it does, 
And I don't want you to play catch up, you know, because when I say zakat, I explained it already as zakat, what, what it is, that the amount that a person who reaches a certain level of wealth and maintained it for one year, then he, he become obligated to give zakat. If a person has his basic needs met and, um, and you know, he works and all of that, but he still not you know, able to survive, that's the fakir or miskin. Even miskin, he gets salary and everything, but is in debt in a hole. So uh, people who are rich are supposed to uh, give those who are poor. That's zakah, for example. Right? So yani, what I'm trying to say here is the, everything has its own ground, and it makes sense when you read it in a, in a construction as a relationship like I just told you now, draw the paper while I'm talking, you are saying this is the, uh, you know uh, committed deen, you know establishing the religion, is two parts Muslim programs, non-Muslim and uh, non-Muslim programs non-Muslim, not new Muslim but Muslim, new Muslim, same thing then under non-Muslim, what are you going to do? they're going to go to them, they're going to come here we're going to do activities together, we to decide that things will go accordingly this is for the Muslims. So Muslims, young, old, men, women, what are they? Then you have to decide. And then you go from there, what do they need? Okay, that's what we need. Social, religious, spiritual, educational. We're going to give you the facility and do it. But you become accountable later in front of us. We help you, you help the mosque later on. So that is exactly what it is. So, Yani, we, we tell the people that we teach you and the mosque will help you by providing all of these things. You'll be mentored, but you give back to the mosque. So if they give a speech, they would teach them how to do it, then you should give a speech. Sisters, we are teaching you this class, so we expect from you to go and teach it to someone else and so on. So that's basically the structure of the IGH. I'm sorry if I deviated a little bit here or there. So if somebody have any question about that, I want to be clear about it. So everything we do, it makes sense to you. I want to hear your voices or put your hand up or thumbs up or something like that in the, um, you know, in the screen, you know, emoji screen. So I can see what is, uh, what is happening. Okay, Sister uh, Mariam, you are going to uh, read for us today's agenda, today's program. Assalamu alaikum, uh, This is Siti. Um, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, just to uh, put more, more input on what we did last week is uh, your introduction of the Circle of uh, control, circle of influence, and circle of yes. concern. So I think that uh, was that is the uh, main idea that we want to put in is uh, to first um, uh, see what we have control with, and the main the main part right now our concern is to for the community. And um, yes, uh, and last week, some of us already submitted our assignment, which Sister Mariam has put in. And uh, uh, what I did was uh, um, under Circle of Concern uh, is our, and our theme for this year is to improve ourselves in personal character, you know, characters and our personal uh, personality is to conform to the Islamic uh, prescription. Mm -hmm. So to review um, um, from, from our classes this year is firstly is to improve ourselves from within, is to, to start from our hearts. So, so to review this, uh, um, what we did last year was uh, the uh we did a course on actions of the heart mm. so those are the concerns that we have and we need to have it before we actually 
act on others. So part of it was uh, sincerity, uh, to have taqwa, to have, um, there are 12 items on it, uh, which everyone can review, inshallah, and then improve from there. <laughs> and then for this, um, the uh, theme that I uh, uh, suggest is to spread happiness in the community. Because mm. since, since we have uh, COVID and everyone was all cooped up at home, so, and it kind of put us down a bit. So I think the best is to, to spread the happiness that we have and to support each other so that we have a positive, uh, what do you call that? Positive, uh, effect on, on everyone. Mm. So. Basically, how can we do that, Sister City, with the with the suggested topic that we came up with? So, so my theme is uh, uh to give a uh, theme is to spread happiness through giving sadaka. So, firstly, sadaka doesn't mean uh, monetary only, but the simplest form is to spread smile to uh, everyone. So, so when we see each other, we are already cheerful. And we transmit the positivity, positivity, uh, positivity to everyone. Um, mm. and then um, uh, I cannot remember because I, I my screen is now locked for recording, so I, <laughs> I have to go from what I remember. Um, more uh, and also um, also uh, do good deeds. Good deeds is also a form of sadaka is um yeah. and um also to for sisters to come and uh do whatever uh service they can to uh and if they do not have or they're feeling down they can always come and and um what do you call that to um do serve uh like to help others because this is also a form of therapy, uh, like uh, uh, in I uh, think in Al Quran Surah Al Tawbah. Can you can you remember? Um, it, what does that verse that, say? It says that um, if you do sadaqah, you uh, you you will not grieve. Mm. Uh, let me see. If I the verse says, take from, take from their money a sadaqah that purify them. Yes, and, yes, yes. And, yeah, to tahirum or to zakihim biha. You know, that purifies them and clean, cleanse them. So the sadaqah that they give, the Prophet Sallallahu you know, Allah telling him to take the sadaqah from the people to spend it to, for the poor, and this will purify the, those who give the sadaqah. And also right? they will not grieve, and they will not, they will not, they, they will be lifted spiritually, inshallah, I think. Yeah, فَلَا خَوْفٌ They have no fear, no sadness. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you in a way that this is the practical aspect of things, Sister City. Do this, do that, right? But I wanted to come from the planning side. And this is what we're missing in our community. We tell people what to do. Do this, do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. And then people become overwhelmed. You know, they mm -hmm. don't know what to do, what to do it. And what if I don't have money? Do I? What do I give? And uh, well, how about my prayers that I don't? I don't know how to recite properly. And this and that to become overwhelmed. So what I'm trying to do is like I'm trying to make our mind think in a different way when we give da'wah to somebody, give you you know preach to somebody or invite somebody to Islam or teach them about it. We have to have a structured mind. Structured mind. Let me ask you a question. Everybody, huh? Whenever we have a problem, so I bring you a problem, what is the first thing that comes to your head? That this is a problem, then what? You can say the first thing that comes to your head. There is no right or wrong here. I'm just telling you, yeah. So, so no, no judgment. Just tell me if you have a problem at your home with your with your husband, with your children, at the grocery store, at work, 
at the mosque, you have a problem now. You are presented with a problem. Either you are part of that problem, uh, but you're there, there is a problem. What is the first thing you do? Or the first thing that comes in here? Oh. Salam, I would say, how can we solve it? Okay, good. What else, sisters? Uh, what is the cause of it? Good. What else? Uh, who is it affecting? Is that, okay. is, is that have anything to do with me? Is it affecting but you, 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 you are like, in, yeah, you are in the middle of a problem. Don't think about the problem as like something like over there and I'm looking at it. No, I want you to see that this problem is like something you are in right now. <clears throat> what can I do? Yes, to what? What you can do in order for, for what to happen? Can to resolve it. Like what can I contribute to resolve the issue? So everybody here, all of you said that you think about solution, right? When you, when, you, when you are presented with a problem, the first thing you think about is how to solve it, right? Yes. Yeah. For sure, yes. Yeah. We need the yeah. hal. Yes. But that's wrong. Yeah. You know, you think, you know, we, we know that. There is a problem. All of us as human beings, we know that a problem needs to be solved. This is this is a given. This is, it's a given. So why you are jumping to the thing that it is given without knowing why it happened in the first place. That's why one of you said the cause, right? If you know why the problem happened, then you're going to deal with it. Because, you know, you want to solve it, but you don't know how to solve it. Then what are you going to do? You're going to make a mistake. You have another problem now. <laughs> yeah, so that is, that is what we think. That is why I'm taking classes now in policy design. What a policy design is, like finding a solution. So they say, never ever jump to the solution of a problem without knowing exactly why this problem exists in the first place. Because maybe it's just some somebody put, did something and you can just stop it and that's it. We have, don't have a problem. So if, if the cause of the problem can be stopped, the problem stops now and forever. If not, then we can mitigate the situation. But always we look at the problem uh, and then we come up with a solution. Oh, you should do this. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, no, this. oh no, you should have been done like that. So we jump to solutions and we take things in our own hand without knowing. You know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when a person came and started urinating in the masjid. Can you imagine? Yeah, can you envision the picture here? Like he's sitting with his companions, all nice and clean and talking about Quran. The Prophet teaching them. It's, it's something like beautiful. And this Bedouin guy just comes in, pull his clothes up and <laughs> start peeing in the corner, you know. Started urinating in the corner there. That's a problem, isn't it? <sighs> yeah? It was a problem. Big problem. Correct? So what happened? The companions wanted to jump on the guy to stop him. But the Prophet ﷺ said, no, let him finish. You see how he looked at the problem now? He's not looking at the problem that someone urinating. He looked at the problem at someone who did not know that this place, he can urinate or not urinate. So let him finish, then we'll talk about it. You see? So solution of the problem is not necessarily what you think is a solution. Stop the wrong that is happening. Something wrong, let's stop it. That's not how you solve a problem. Because you may stop it and the problem explode in your face. Or you're going to have a bigger problem. You know? Like, you know, someone, a, a, a lady came one time in, in, a, in a masjid uh, function, a non-Muslim lady come, was dressed improperly. You know, dressed above her knees and, you know, cut and all, all the kind of thing. Young woman with a big dog with her. So people freaked out, and the, like some seven, eight people came to my office. Sheikh, so a lady come like this. Why we allow this kind of thing? This should be stopped. I said, okay, what are you going to do now? She's inside the masjid now. So what are you going to do? Hmm, tell me. So the idea is they, they they do not know what to do, 
and they want me to take an action that they want me to take. They cannot take themselves. So they want me to come and tell the lady, get out of here. This is improper. This is a mosque. You are you are uh, making our place impure, for example. That, that's what in their head. They cannot do it. They're coming me to do it. So if is this a solution? It's not a solution because we have a problem already. But the issue is that woman, it's either she knows and she's coming here to make a statement and it tease us and, and, and in our face, either she knows what she's doing or she doesn't know. And the possibility of that she doesn't know is bigger than this one. And actually, that was the case. When we talked to her, I said, hi, how are you doing? And you, you're coming to this festival, you know, but all, all of that, this is Muslim, you know, as you see. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And then she just left. And, um, you know, whatever. She came later, I don't know. But, yeah. So the way you find the why the problem happened, and then what are the causes of the problem, and what are the who are the factors in the in this? Is the administration involved? Is the sheikh involved? Am I involved? Is my wife involved? Is my children involved? And what type of involvement they are in? And then you try to prioritize and see which part of the problem you want to handle first, and that all ha can happen in seconds. But you are trained to do it. So you have a head. You have this is a problem now. You have to state the problem. Because sometimes people think this is the problem. Well, the problem is something else. The problem is something else. An employee comes to me in the morning and say, you know, I'm late because of the traffic. If I look at the traffic on my computer and there is no problem. That means he's lying. So the problem is not that he is late because of the traffic. The problem is that he's late. But the bigger problem is, why is he late? What makes him late? How can I remove that cause so he doesn't become late anymore? Maybe he sleeps late. Maybe he's on social media all the time. Maybe he have kids who have needs and his wife is sick or something like that, and he has to take care of the kids. Maybe he dropped kids in the school in the morning. Maybe there's a valid reason. He, needs, he just needs help. So if you look at the problem only, you're fired. Don't come late again. Did you think, did you solve the problem like that? No. Someone is struggling with, with, with Islam, for example. You said, oh, you are not a good Muslim. You're supposed to do this and this and that. Oh, you, you cannot do this. Come, let me teach you. Do. No. Maybe that person will never come to the mosque again because, you know, they're afraid. They're scared now. Because they'll be judged. No, you could talk to them about what is the issue and why that issue is an issue. And how can we solve the problem? Now, there is a diagram I want to show you. Sister Mariam, did you receive the diagram I sent you? Uh, yes, I'm pulling it up right now. Do they yeah, pull, 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 it, pull it up. I don't know if we have a whiteboard or not on, on Zoom. But maybe you can share the screen or I, I don't know. But yeah. You see the diagram? Everybody, can, you can see the diagram? Yes. Okay. Uh, this diagram is, is called the Ishikawa or the fishbone. Ishikawa. Is, you know, the fish and then the bone is left like this. So the head is like the problem. You have to state your problem. My kids are not performing school. The sheikh is giving long speeches. Just come with a problem, you know, and this is your assignment for this week. Come with a problem. Come up with a problem that you have. I told you we're going to practice that in the course of this month. So this is our homework. I want you to go Google it and uh, get that or draw it in a piece of paper. Hold on a second. So this is our practice. So try to draw it in your notebook or try to uh, insert it in a Microsoft Word and try to work with it or do it in your iPad, whatever it is, and have that for your life. You know, this is how you handle. This is called diagnosing the problem. Diagnosing the problem, identifying the problem. Where is the problem? What are the causes, right? So now the head is where you state the problem. I have a problem, my husband is such and such. I have a problem with my prayers. I have a problem with my child. 
I have a problem with such and such. Problem is not like something bad. No, it's an issue that making you uncomfortable or making other people uncomfortable or it is not accepted or you have some issue with somebody. It's not necessarily you are in the wrong. I want you to understand that. When we say it's a problem, means it's an issue that needs to be handled. So you can write whatever you want in that head part. Then you see how those bones coming into the main backbone of the fish, those will be main causes. So you have to write them in a list randomly, on a list, a piece of paper, and then you try to find the categories. Like for example, um, let me let me send Sister Mariam an example of that, so you can you can relate to it while we are thinking. Let me send her an example of that. Example of the fishbone diagram. Okay. You should have received it by now, Sister Mariam. Did you get it? I got it. I'll just load it up right now. Yes, ma'am. So an example. So you can look at this example and try to emulate it. Try to apply it to your own problem. Okay, to your own issue. This. You have an issue with loading it, Sister Maria? Yeah, so be be the example of anything, you know, with in your family, with your studies, with your work, in the street, whenever you go to the post office or the bank or finances or anything like that. So just write it as a problem in that head part of the fish. And here you go. So this is an example here. You see the cause and effect, right? Effect is the problem. So, yeah, so you have low board scores, and then, you know, you have people, and with the test taking, you have the environment, you have the method, you have the measurement, you have the materials. Those are problems. Yeah, they have a problem with materials. How, how you can say that subcategory is under it. Measurement, subcategory is under, under it. Method, subcategory is un, under it. So you have to say this problem is affecting me, my family, and the Muslim community. Or this problem concerns the masjid administration, the sheikh, and me. Or it is the masjid administration, the board of IGH, and the sheikh. Or the sheikh and the community. And my children. So those are the actors. They call them actors in the problem. So you have to write who are the ones concerned with this, who are the ones involved in this. That's you know, in a separate sheet of paper, you write that on the side. And then under each actor, what exactly they represent. So the sheikh, how can he participate in, from your, in your opinion in solving that problem? Can he speak about it? Can he, can, can he come and solve it? Is there something physical has to be done? Or do I have to file a complaint? The administration is not answering. There is a problem with communication. So under each of this category, you're going to write. And then you go put it in the fishbone. You fill your information in the fishbone after you prioritized it and categorized it and see which one comes first, which one comes second. And on each bone, like you see here, you're going to say, oh, we have a problem with money and I have a problem with planning and I have a problem with support and I have a problem with such and such. So support. You know, my parents are not giving me and I reach to the masjid and they are not giving me and the government is giving, but it is a little bit. Mm. So that's that's actors in that. And under each one, there's an issue. Once you do that, then you have to explore solutions now. So solutions become very effective, permanent, and you learn a lot to avoid such problems in the future. And whenever a, pro a bigger problem comes, 
you are going to handle it the same exact way. Does that make sense? Is, is, is that amazing or what? <laughs> so you try to do that exercise more often to until whenever a problem is presented, it can take you just a few minutes to find out in your head. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla says when you hear the thunder, you recite, you know, uh, you should recite the ayah when Allah says that the thunder is making praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels praising Allah out of fear of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah save us from his punishment. Amen. Whenever you hear thunder and you see lightning and all that, you should ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to save us from his punishment subhanahu wa ta'ala and make it a reign of rahmah and mercy, not a reign of punishment and suffering. Amin, Rabbil Alameen. Um, you know, by the way, it's the sunnah of the Prophet, it is winter now, but it's the sunnah of the Prophet when rain comes to go and stand under it <laughs> and receive the water, you know, make dua. Did you know that sunnah before? No, she. Wait. That's that huh? Yes, we did that all the time, you know, when we were little kids. Yes, the uh, Prophet ﷺ said, this water is coming from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, it did not touch earth yet. So he wanted to be the first thing that that drop of water touches before it goes to the ground. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, you know, like, you know, it's coming from heavens, and that drop will come and touch earth. So before it touches earth, I wanted to touch me, to cleanse me. So the Prophet uh -huh. used to stand in the, in the rain, and he, mashallah, you know, washes himself in the rain, yeah, like taking a shower. And he asked Allah for his mercy, for his rahmah. Yeah. So if you can do that at least once, come on, of course, don't do it in public because, you know, your clothes is going to be wet and they get stuck to your body and all of that, especially your ladies. So you know, be careful of this thing. So it, you can do it in your backyard or something. <laughs> That's great, Sheikh, because my, my kids are listening to this and they are there. <laughs> they have the biggest yeah, mouth on their they will, face. They will, they will love it. Yeah, they will love it. And yeah. subhanAllah, it gives you a sense of uniting with nature as well. Yeah. So back to our subject, I hope, inshallah, yani, I, that's what I told you. That's what I'm studying in, in uh, the masters I'm doing right now. And I'm going to share with you that. So it helps me actually with my studies. So because, you know, I'm asked in my studies to apply this to real life. So I'm applying it with you, right? So and I'm asking you to apply it with real life as well. And this is how you're going to handle issues in the community or within yourself inshallah so that's called the fishbone diagram remember it a fishbone diagram it makes it easy so first you have to write everything relating to that problem just brain dump they call it brain dump so you have to put everything on a sheet of paper every word that is concerning you regarding that issue and then try to make categories what is the main concept here money administration the government me him, her, people, behavior, um, culture, whatever it is. So make a category for that. And under each one, make subcategories, everything relating to it. Money. Is it planning? Is it budgeting? Is it income? Is it saving? Is it expenditure? Is it what exactly? So you're going to write all of those under it as subcategories. And you keep eliminating things that they do not belong or move one thing from one category to another or edit and once you finalize this, then you prioritize it. Which one comes first, which one comes second. Then you go to the fishbone diagram and pull it. Now you have a mental and uh, a mental note of it. Then you know now what comes first, what comes second. And every time you change something in the bone, it will change the head. The problem will be affected. Every time you do something in the back, it will uh, echo in the front. So one cause you eliminate it, you will find that the problem is getting solved. All right. So that is uh, uh, another way. This kind of planning and structure helps us in all fronts. Helps us not to procrastinate. Helps us to take action. Helps us to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Helping us to not to complain a lot because we like to complain a lot. You know, the identifying the problem is very easy, but always simple. For people, oh, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. But I, I'm sorry, you know, mentioning a problem or stating a problem is easy, but identifying one is not easy. Is it really a problem? Is this really the problem or the problem is you? Understanding it wrong. 
So that that's that's one issue. So and it is harder to solve. It is harder to solve. Assalamu alaikum, sisters. I don't know if she's good. Go ahead, sister. Raise her hand. Who is the sister? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Mahmoud. How are you? Alhamdulillah. This is Sister Nurat. I, I just want. Sister Nurat, why your, why your name is not written there? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using my phone. Are you sick? May Allah give you shifa. I mean, I have a cold. <laughs> Oh, I'll give you a shipper. I mean, just a call here. Thank you so much. Happy, happy, happy. Go ahead. So, to capture on what Sister uh, City is saying, and also just the paradigm that you just shared with us, we have a problem and we need a solution. So, Sister City was saying to do something uh, to spread Sadaka in, in, with the, among the sisters. So, um, and also to capture on. on Find the solutions to the problems that the sisters have in the masjid is we during Ramadan we need volunteers. We need volunteers for serving food. We need volunteers for babysitting. We need volunteers for etiquettes of the masjid, making sure people are not talking. No food in the masala. Uh, masala. Uh, we need volunteers for welcoming people to the masjid, making sure that if we have a sister, for example, who has never visited before, is a non-Muslim, somebody is able to talk to her, do dawah. So I'm just uh, putting this out here. So these are our problems. Inshallah, how do we find solutions, sisters? All the sisters in the forum, please, we'll be sending out uh, Google volunteer forms out. Please sign up for the sake of Allah and earn uh, lots of uh, benefits, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Actually, this is a great example now of what I was talking about. Problem and solution. So we have a problem and the solution was suggested. Just sign up for the volunteer forum. But I want to know what people are signing up for. Like, what, what is it? Like, you know, what entails a volunteer? How many hours they're going to do? Of course, I know you went through all of that. But I want that to be clear before they sign up. Yes, you know, inshallah, like, inshallah, you know, inshallah, you know, I, I just, wait, wait, I'm not accusing anybody here. I'm just trying to apply what I just taught you now. And this is a great example. So you can put in the head of the fish, recruiting volunteers for the different activities of the masjid. You have to state the, the problem. Do not, do not make it so big. You know, the details will come later. Come later. But you have to state your problem clearly, precisely, exclusively, trying to recruit qualified volunteers for activities in the masjid during Ramadan. Is that the problem? Yes. <laughs> exactly. So write that down. Now, the next thing, next thing, you're going to find the problem actors, the actors on the problem. Who's going to help you? Volunteers. People who qualify to be volunteers. That is society. That is society, civil society. That are the people. But who will help you with that? Who's going to receive the volunteers? Who's going to identify the volunteers? Who's going to interview the volunteers? Who's going to train the volunteers, right? All yes. of these things. Then you have to say administration. Administration. There is administration and administration or trainers. I have mentors, trainers, all their volunteers. You have to write those down as actors in the problem. The sheikh, for example, because I want him to speak about it from a religious perspective. So you're going to put the sheikh there. So all those actors. Then you have to answer one main problem, Sister Nurat, and everybody here. Listen attentively. Then you have to say why this did not work before. Because the problem now, part of the problem, you say we always need volunteers. You have been needing volunteers for the past 10 years. Why you are not able to get all the volunteers by now? That is a problem. You have to say that's called failures. Failures. Who failed? Administration failed? Or the volunteers themselves? The, the, there is no interest in the community to volunteer? We have to talk about that. People are not interested, for example, in babysitting. People aren't interested to come in Ramadan. Or people are busy. Or there is COVID. 
there is some issue preventing them from volunteering. So you have to identify why this problem did not work before, right? What I am, am I ready to do now to change that? Then it becomes very easy to, to recruit volunteers. You're going to have a booklet. The, 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 this is the definition of volunteer. This is the volunteer that we need. Those are the jobs for the volunteers. And under babysitting, that is expected from you to have, and that's expected from you to do, and this is how you're going to be rewarded. Then when I look at it, I said, mm -mm, no, no, no. I love babysitting, but I do not qualify for the babysitting in Masjid al-Salam in Ramadan, I do not qualify. Why? Because it's explained very clearly. The expectations there are very clear and precise. I cannot meet them. But I can find volunteering to receive, for example, the, the new Muslims. Oh, that I can do. Oh, I love to be social, but there is something not social I can actually work with for my hours. So that... Problem is not only we say, Sheikh, we keep saying volunteers, but people are not showing up. Why are not why, why they are not showing up? Why they give up fast? Maybe you're burning them out. You're bringing one volunteer to do the job of five. So why you don't have five? Oh, because no, there's no five who who volunteered. But why they did not volunteer? Oh, we did not advertise enough. Why did not advertise? Oh, we don't have people to advertise. Oh, we'll get some. <laughs> you know why? Why the sound system in Masjid al-Salam have a problem until now? I'm just giving you a manifest example. Since I came six years ago, still the sound system have a problem in Masjid al-Salam. Until people are frustrated, they don't want to even talk about it. So the message said, please don't talk to me about it. I hate this, I don't want to talk about it. But the problem is st still persists. I do not like the sound system. And I am the one who use it more than anyone else. And you are not helping me out. So what is the problem Can exactly? I say I'm sorry, Sheikh. Can I say the council actually addressed that and they're they they install a new sound system, inshallah. <laughs> when? They have it's been addressing coming. it for, for, for seven years now. No, well I it's they they're redoing the whole masjid sound system and also with HPA, sister section, brother section, upstairs, downstairs, and HPA, inshallah. It's coming. It's going to be Digital, digital also, new technology. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But what I'm telling you, type, now, now, what do we learn from this problem that Sister Nurat said that the solution is? Can anybody volunteer and tell me what do we learn from it? A problem that persisted for years and now they found the solution. What do you learn from that? Um. I think it's uh, due to small problems that we need to break down the problem into smaller uh, items. No, because the, everybody was overwhelmed with it. There was no diagnosis for the problem. And I'm afraid that the digital system will be put and there is a problem that will prevent it from working properly as well. That's what I'm afraid of. You understand you me, Sister Marat? Uh, you're gonna you, you're gonna have a digital system, but there is not no qualified person to manage it. Oh no! Um, so and somebody have... will somebody will do different settings for different things. Boy Scouts are having something. Somebody's gonna go play in the digital thing, and the Sheikh Mamdouh's voice is higher. Somebody's gonna make it lower, and who who's no. gonna have access to it, and who's gonna manage it, and how it's gonna be done, and who no, likes the Sheikh... echo and who doesn't? <laughs> no, Sheikh, I am not an IT person. But um, from the description, there was a whole presentation of how this is all going to work out. And good. I could not speak on the details of how it's going to work out, but it's supposed to be a good system that takes care of all the issues and problems, inshallah. That's all Al I can Al say. Al Al Alhamdulillah, that's the, the perfect solution. <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> another <laughs> issue. This is, this is good training for us, by the way. And I want you to, everybody, please pitch in, please talk. Please come, come and participate in the discussion. Say, say, say something. I don't care what you say. Just say something. Be part of it. Because this is how you're going to retain information, you know. People come to me and say, Sheikh Mamdouh, I want you to, you to help us with building a masjid. And we already purchased a piece of land for half a million dollars. I'm just giving you an example, like happened in California, for example. Half a million dollar piece of land. And we need about $2 million to build a building. Right? Then I asked them a few questions. How many families are you serving? How many people are praying in the Eid? 
what is the highest uh, age group in the community? Is it young people, youth, elders, or mix? What is the ethnic backgrounds of those people? Uh, what are the services that you think that you can provide? All of that, right? So when they came to me, I said, don't build a masjid. Build a school and a playground, a good playground with the swings and all of that, and build like a school. I said, what are you talking about, Chief? We want to build a masjid. I said, well, you purchased a half million dollar. You wanted to squeeze the community all over the place to get two million dollars to build a beautiful building with a minaret and a dome. Then what? Then what? The masjid has a thousand people and your community has 200 people. And out of 200 people, how many people are going to show for Fajr? How many people are going to show for Isha? 10, 15? So you have all this investment for another 10 or 15 years until the masjid start functioning fully and you start getting, uh, you start getting return on your investment. So what you are actually doing here is wasting community <coughs> property money. But if you do a, a, a nice playground and a school, then you have the investment actually working from day one. You have curriculum, you have teachers, you're paying them, you have, you have children. So people will start coming, the children will bring their moms and their dads. Each one of them want activity, they want a class, they want to listen, they want a prayer. And you grow the community and then you build the masjid later on to serve the need of the community. You do not build the masjid and it is not serving the community. And people are going here and there for private classes and school and everything. And they come from Masjid for prayer, which does not do anything. That is problem number one. Many problem months. number two, when you have a $2 million Masjid, how much is going to cost you monthly to maintain? How much are you going to pay the Imam? said, oh, we did not think about that. I said, oh, exactly. Exactly my point. You know, you are you are collecting $2 million to build the Masjid and you do not even think what kind of Imam has to come in that big Masjid. You're going to have an overqualified Imam who, want, who take like most of your donations for teaching what? 10, 15 kids and uh, seven, eight youth and the rest are seniors who do just don't want, who don't want to study anything, just want to come for prayer. That's a problem, right? So basically, it goes in the other, in the other way. People have lots of money and they're very cheap. They are not investing on the, the utilities of the masjid. They have very bad bathrooms, and I'm not talking about our masjid, but there are masjids I visited like that. Community is rich, but they are not investing on the cleanliness of the masjid. That's also a problem, and from the other side, people do not have money, and they plan beyond their means. And people have lots of money, but they are not investing it in the right place. So that's that's a, a problem Like I, I solve for people. I tell them what is the best for their community, not what they dream of, what they think about. Oh, let's build a lounge. Oh, let's do such and such. But why are you doing it? Like from day one, when you open it, the grand opening of that utility or that place that you opened, how much benefit the community would benefit? Us, for example, alhamdulillah, we know that that, that would be for sisters and this would be for the seniors and everybody's happy. That's great. I like that. Sister Rona says, oh, there, there is a presentation, there is a sound engineer, and all of that will come and fix the problem. I, I, I love it. I love it if it, if it is uh, as good as it sounds. Sure. So I want, you to, I want you to go today, inshallah, with what I mentioned, uh, a recording. Please, Sister City, forward the recording to everybody. Listen to it. I want each of you to write uh, in that, you know, you can, as a class, say, what the sisters are struggling with in the Masjid al Salam, let's say in the month of Ramadan, and put that in the head and try as a team to bring all the causes and try to put it on that fishbone and we'll work with it next week and I'm going to give you another set of tools and skills, inshallah, to handle the problem. All right? Sister, uh, uh, Mamdou, before... Um... Before we wrap up, inshallah, I just want to remind the sisters that uh, all the problems that we are mentioning, uh, also uh, Sheikh Mamdou did a, did a session in the previous weeks called uh, Be the Change You Want to See. That would have been our first, it should have been our first um, uh, start of the year, right? Um, but all these so please, all the problems we are please, mentioning. Please, so please find the link, Sister Maryam, to the khutbah and yes. to the lecture. 
and forward it to everybody to listen to it. And I, I definitely will, because all these problems we are mentioning, we are a, a pro, uh, picking out problems is not only about pointing fingers. We are we are very important constituents. We can make these changes, inshallah, if we all contribute our help. So. And I want sisters to take the lead. I'm empowering you sisters here. Each one of you, I believe in you. I believe, I, I really do. I, I see sisters of Masjid Salam, they have an aptitude and capacity. I did not see it anywhere else. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your dedication studying. But this year, I want you to be out there taking the leadership, you know, doing it. You have an imam who is supporting you here. Grab the chance, please. Can you do that for me? <laughs> Take yes, the chance. Right. You have an imam who believes in you, who are saying, sisters, yeah. I want you out there. I want you up there. I want you to take the lead. I want your voice to be heard. I want you to prove that you are someone that needs to be listened to. And I'm giving you that opportunity. I'm supporting you 100%. So my class, I believe in my class. I, don't, I, I want to see my investment in you. You know, fruitful this year. I hope that's, that, you know, it does not come clearer and bolder than that. <laughs> Inshallah, so right. Sheikh, if, I, if I could just uh, make a last comment. So we've identified problems, and just like you said, um, it's uh, a definition of volunteers, which we have, the categories of volunteers we have, the expectations for those volunteers which we have. Uh, if I can just implore the sisters, just the sisters, even if it's the sisters in this forum, for the sake of Allah, are wanting to earn some more ajar during the month of Ramadan. Sister Miriam ha, is going to send out the Google form. Please fill it out, sign up. You don't have to sign up for 30 days, but just the date and time that you have. Problem, solution, alhamdulillah. That's all I, I want. Jazakallah. <laughs> but we will work on this problem until we finish this class this month, right? We'll work on it. So maybe we'll come up with a design that will help you once the sisters sign up, Sister uh, Nura. Okay? okay, so they will help you. So we'll have, we'll create a, a, a system that's saying, you know, volunteering, the definition of volunteering, some verse and some hadith I'm going to support you with, right? And the reward for it. And then, okay. you know, why why do we need volunteers at Masjid al-Salam? What are the volunteers that we are looking for? The programs that we have volunteers for? What is the expectations from the volunteer? And the qualification for the expectation, match the qualification with the with the expectations and the work and then you know that's how you'll be compensated you're compensated by allah or you're going to be issued the hours to help you with your work or with your resume or you're going to get some money uh you know funds and all of that how once you have a piece of paper like that then everybody reads trust me you're going to have an overflow of volunteers in the masjid trust me i know inshallah all right <laughs> Any, anybody have any questions? There is yes, somebody I, raising his hand. I, I, I do. This is uh, Franjalani. Um, uh, following up on you, the process of um, uh, um, selecting volunteers, um, Sheikh, uh, could you please um, identify for us what the ISGH uh, bylaws are as far as uh, selecting or appointing or volunteering, uh, picking volunteers for committees and subcommittees? Because I know there are a couple of other Masajid who are really bogged down into right. the process. Right. Yeah. At ISGH, they have two types. One is the elected volunteers for office and one is appointed volunteers for office, right? So now the volunteers like from president, vice president, secretary and treasurer, those are the, uh, you know, uh, uh, elected. There is a, a, a general election among all the members of ISGH. They chose, choose those ones. And every two years, uh, one uh, two years, the secretary or the president will change. The other two years, the vice president, the other, I mean, next year, the vice president and the treasurer will change. So this is the executive body. Then each zone, there is a north zone like we are in now. It has five mosques. And then you have in the Sugarland area, there are about six mosques. So they make it south zone, southwest zone, southeast zone, north zone. Each one of them have a director for all the masjid, the five masjids in Cyprus, Woodland, uh, Bilal Masjid, and the Champion Masjid. Four mosques, this is north zone. It has one director, at, you know, general director. And each mosque have an AD, assistant director. Like our assistant director is Brother Nader. 
all of them report to all of these are elected positions, elected position. People run for it and then they are elected. Once you're elected, you are the AD, you report the director and the director is part of the IGH board and the board have an executive committee. That is the general structure. Then within the masjid, every zip code based on the population of Muslims in it, they have a number of representatives. So there is some, some zip code has 50 uh, Muslims. So there are two representing 25 each. Some, some 10 zip codes, they only have 50. So all the 10 zip codes will have two representatives. And those are elected as well by their zip code. Now committees are appointed by the council. So once we have the AD in the Masjid Salam and elected council for each zip code, then they need a committee for sisters. So they have suggestions and then they, they interview and then they appoint the committee called the sisters committee. And that sisters committee reports to the board of the masjid and so on. So that's basically what the structure is in general, you know. And if you read the IGH bylaws on their website, you'll understand it more. My question is more pertaining to uh, once we have the sisters committee, the, the subcommittees like uh, Sister Nurse bringing up the, the Ramadan uh, needs. So a subcommittee for someone uh, uh, responsible for the babysitting, a subcommittee for responsible for the audio video. So, so how, how are those people selected? I mean, we can ask for volunteers. You, 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 you just go ahead and they say we need a volunteer for that. The committee says, like Sister Norat, now the committee, Sister's Committee in Ramadan. So she says, please fill the Google form. You say what, what you can do, and they, they select you based on your ability. You're going to do the babysitting because you said, I want babysitting. Are you qualified for the babysitting? Yes, then you go. That's how they select you. Yeah, yeah of course. I, I'm just wondering what might be a, an incentive to bring people to the table to do that. Uh, now you're talking about the incentive. Yes. That's what I said. You're going to tell them there is a payment per hour that's a paid volunteer, or you become recognized that there is a certificate that comes at the end that you volunteered, and thank you for your volunteering. Or we're going to write down the hours that you volunteered, the 30 hours during the month of Ramadan, so you can use it for community service hours. You can use it for your new resume to apply for a job and stuff like that. Those are the incentives. But ultimately, the people are chosen by Sister Nora. I, I'm just make, make, taking this example. That you can ask, inshallah, Sister Nora, by yourself, inshallah, out of the class. And you can discuss that with the uh, committee chair, you know, like in the Google form, there, is, there will be a phone number and tell them who selects the volunteers. And they will for sure will tell you, inshallah. Okay. Jazakallah. I have to go because one minute left for Zohar prayer and I am going to go for the prayer, inshallah. جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله